Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game under development by Game Labs, the folks who brought us Ultimate General Gettysburg, Ultimate General Civil War, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, and another a number of other games that have featured on this channel. Uh, this is episode number 11 in our Let's Play series, playing as the Germans in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is part of the campaign, which is still in its very early sort of alpha phase of development. The game is available in early access if you're interested in checking it out. And as we're already 11 episodes in, I don't need to give you the whole spiel about what the game is, but in a quick 10-second view... Basically, it's a game where you get to design warships in the age of battleships from the 1890s to World War II, and you get to fight those ships against enemies while you manage the fleet that you're in control of, which is going to be one of the great imperial powers of the late 1800s, early 1900s. With that being said, we just lost a, def or lost a battle against the AI, which is pretty rare in our last video, uh, losing a battleship and an armored cruiser at sea. Uh, a swarm of enemy torpedo boats uh, had our number that day. I'm not sure it was enough to say the AI has improved. I think I saw a lot of the same weaknesses in the AI that is typical. Uh, but who am I to say? They were able to end up winning a victory. So, um, you know, maybe I'm just not giving the AI enough credit. With that being said, this is episode number 11. So we're going to jump right back in. It is October of 1892, and we are about to fight a convoy battle off the eastern coast of England. Uh, so this was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel. Let's jump back in. So let's get back at it. Um, we've got a convoy battle here, October of 92, closing in on the three-year anniversary for this war. So might be the longest war I've fought so far. British seems more resilient than usual in terms of like they're actually building ships now to replace their losses. But it looks like we'll have another whack-a-mole convoy battle, then we'll eventually run into enemy warships here. So 11 transports versus two German armored cruisers. The British have three cruisers who will be showing up. So let's see what we've got in store for us. All right. Maybe slow down one knot to see if we get more accurate gunnery. Switch guns to HE. And let's go. Crank the speed up. I'm assuming that's the head of the enemy task force. We may want to split our two armored cruisers into two separate divisions. Look at all those question marks. It's not a torpedo boat. Whoever's labeling this a torpedo boat, I don't care. Fire that watch officer. Maybe it's a torpedo boat, sir. Oh, you mean that 7,000 ton merchant ship doesn't quite look like a torpedo boat? Okay. As a Dane, that uh, border was <laughs> hurts your soul to see that German border. Well... You know, the germ the wars of German unification. Yeah. Torpedo boats in this era were like three thousand tons, yeah. Or not three thousand, three hundred. Rip to the minnows. Taking a good deal of punishment here. Let's do that. Let's let's have Kaiser Augusta detach. And uh, sail up the right side of this convoy. All Saxony sails down the left. Okay. So Wosley, Minos, both are in trouble. should be sinking already. All that damage. All 
right? So we got a fish out here against the Phaethon. Broadside hit. Oh my god, just sink already. 13, 15, 16 hits. Come on, Minos. Die. It's on 2%. Did it really stay at 2% and it's not going up at all? One thing's for sure, the damage control crews on all of these ships deserve frickin' medals. Alright, that should be it. Flooding. No, it didn't hit a new compartment? Oh my god. Calliope is about to sink. Alright, so the first sign of enemy warships, we saw some arcing fire coming in from a distance over there. She's sinking. There's the enemy warships coming in. We're going to turn Kaiser Augustine away. I would imagine that the best way to really get the enemy to, like, give up is probably transports, attacking the transports. That, I would assume, the way the game seems to work, that would do the most damage to the enemy government and force them into a into a peace Kaiserin's turning back Saxony's crossing the enemy transport I think there's like one transport way out here so we're gonna have to beat the enemy warships Point blank range. Oh my god. Oh, we sank her quick. Alright, our warships are coming together as the enemy closes. And we're still doing damage to the enemy transports. Courageous is sinking now. Not so courageous. Ha ha ha. Kaiser Augustine. First Kempenfelt. The Wolseley must have like a cargo of frickin' timber or something. Yeah, it's the 1890 oak, but yeah. I know that there's definitely different gameplay strategies based on the era that you're playing in. Kempenfeld. Come on, Wesley. Sink. You already switched fire away from it? It's not sinking, though. Why would you do that? The enemy's still too far away for accurate fire. Oh, uh, glad you wasted a torpedo on the Kempenfeld there. Phaethon. Another torpedo probably wasted. I don't even know if we've taken a hit yet from those enemy warships. But I'll gladly eke into the enemy war economy. There we go, we got the Wolseley. On to the Nunsuch. Damn, that was fast. On to the Nestor. I think it's just the one enemy transport that escaped at this point. I think we've sunk the other 10 or so. How are our tor- what's our torpedo set? We used all our torpedoes in the Kaiser Augustine. Ah. 
And we have two left on the Saxony. Well. The enemy does have two CLs, so... Our gunnery might, uh... Might be good enough. I think we have, uh, this armored cruiser design doesn't have much space allocated toward rearming torpedoes, so we might have only had one or one, one broadside worth of fish. Master's toast. Times 14, 16. 20. Rip. Alright, switch fire. Also, maybe just go to auto. On the ammo type. Alright, so the enemy, I think they've lost all but one of their merchants, but that merchant retreated behind where the enemy warships are, so we really have no chance of catching the final merchant. We'll have to deal the enemy warships a blow. So we'll turn Kaiser Augustine in, because I don't think trading fire at this range is going to do anything but bore you all to sleep. Five kilometers. So let's turn in and engage. Close the distance. And they sail off into the distance, chasing after glory and warships. Is the enemy really turning away from me? Those jackasses. They don't really want to fight, they just want to lob shells and say they gave a good account of themselves. Well, this is going to take a while. Do, 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 do. How y'all doing tonight? There's the other enemy seal. Got that light cruiser's turning in, presumably for a torpedo attack. Turn Kaiser Augusta away. But you target the enemy ship right in front of you. Uh, Hyacinth? So he's turning away. What do these guys have those big six inchers on the side? No, they have five inchers. This is the newer class of CLs. We do have a couple of fires that they started. I can start fires too, yeah. Um alright, so they both have smoke screens going. Lobbing shells from the CA.
Wow, Edinburgh took a nice flooding hit there. Engine one damage. Oh, we got a nice seven inch shell hit into the... Both of these CLs took, uh, took some flotation damage. Turn in and close the range, boys. It's about that time, right, chaps? Alright. Edinburgh's down below 50%. They're gonna pump that out. They have very little damage. Looks like they're already pumping the damage out of the Hyacinth. CL in this era... I think that would be technically true. That would be a protected cruiser in the CAs or armored cruisers. I believe that would be fair to say in this era. It's all confusing because the British had like multiple tiers. They had protected cruisers, they had armored cruisers, they had unarmored cruisers. And then they also, like, made things more complicated by calling, like, cruisers, like, first-class cruisers, second-class, third-class. They didn't always equate to any kind of armor scheme. Hard over! Avoid the fish! Haha! -ha, they missed. Good job, boys. Maybe you should fire a torpedo. You know what? Screw it. Don't let them. Don't let them ram you. But you. Oh, never mind. All right, we got that one. We got it, boys. We go for the other light cruiser, protected cruiser. Yeah, like they even had first and second class battleships. I think it was. And in some cases it made sense, like there was a class of battleships that were being built, I want to say for Chile, but then when the uh, nitrate boom kind of ended, they couldn't afford them anymore, so I think they kept the Royal Navy, kept them, and then they had like 10-inch gun battleships of the pre-Dreadnought era, but the rest of the Royal Navy used 12-inch um, guns, and so these guys were kind of like not really deemed appropriate for the line of battle. I think they deployed most of those. They had like two of them, 10 inch gun battleships overseas. To the, so they kind of treated them more like cruisers. But yeah. Well, like, okay, the class I'm thinking of, and I'd have to look up Conway's warships of the world, which I'm not going to do in the middle of a middle of a game. But um, even the, the one class, the second class battleships that I can think of, they weren't really intended for foreign stations. They weren't even intended for the Royal Navy. They just, like, they fell into their lap because Chile defaulted on the payments. I think it was Chile. There's this wild period in the late... Oh, shit. You're moving too slow. You're not going to avoid that. There's this wild period in the late 1800s where South America is incredibly rich. Like, the best way to think about it is it's basically like their oil states today entirely because they had access to natural deposits of, of nitrates through like bird droppings and other things like that. And that was absolutely vital in the creation of gunpowder, specifically smokeless powder. And it was also vital in the uh, farming industry during the Industrial Revolution. And before the Germans during World War I developed synthetic nitrate and the ability to produce it in a factory, like this was vital. Um, but but the, it created this bubble, this nitrate bubble that caused Chile and a couple other countries in South America to become very rich. And there was this arms race between Chile and Argentina. And it, it's a really interesting period. Chile also had a civil war at this time. So yeah, it's, it's a very interesting period. But while on the battle there, that's another victory for the German uh, Navy. Our armored cruisers basically unscathed. We sank two light cruisers and then 10 transports at the expense of seven men. They lost, uh, or sorry, is it seven men? 40 men. And they lost 1,700. This is just like historically 
atrocious casualties by the Royal Navy every every other day. They are continuing to increase their armored cruiser fleet, though. They're up to 17 now. They keep laying down new ships. The British Empire's head of Admiralty leader, Frederick Richards, is suddenly replaced by Eric Geddes. His recent failures and overall poor management must have been the cause. I just got the better of him. That's new. I've never seen like a news article report saying something like this. So this is def definitely something new. We're winning. The British government is desperately asking us to sign a peace treaty. Screw you. We're going to keep fighting. Meanwhile, new gun layout here. Five superimposed mount guns for large guns. Does that mean we can build the Dreadnought? Of course, I can only build a 12,000 ton ship, so I can't really build the Dreadnought yet, but five superimposed mounts for large guns. We lose one transport, the British lose one. Hey, Army vet, hope you're doing well. All right, November 1892 looks like a quiet month. No battles here. We have relocated considerable assets to Wilhelmshaven, which means that uh, hopefully that's what's helping us cut down on the enemy commerce raiding in the North Sea. I really need more CLs, which we're building. All right, we got a port defense mission here. A bunch of enemy TBs and a light cruiser versus a battleship, an armored cruiser, and two CLs. Well, let's fight it. Let's see how this thing turns out. It'd be nice if in the in the port defense battles, if your ships were like actually anchored in port. That'd be a cool little twist. All right, let's switch these guns over to HE. I think everything here is worth using HE on. The Neuhauser's turning away this lead torpedo boat. The Thrasher is already in serious trouble. Basically started in range of our uh, secondary guns and is taking a lot of gunfire. Where is this armor? Like, where are you going? How about you just do your own thing? Okay. The Swift Shore class. Yeah, Oak, that's, that's accurate. When Chile defaulted, the alternative was basically that the ships might end up in Russian hands. Frederick de Grosser, turn away. Also, engage cheerful. Engage the cheerful. Alright, so Thrasher's chilling at about 50%. Cheerful is. We fired a torpedo at the cheerful. Hard turn on the Carlsher. God, these damn things are so freaking durable, it's absurd. All right, we're gonna get the Thrasher. I guess go for the heart. We fought the heart before, actually. So we're shooting at the heart and the cheerful. Battleship Frederick de Grosser is not going to get out there all on its own. She's going to duck behind our CL and, and CA here. Cheerful's about to go down, I think. Bit rot bite. Thank you for the follow. Trying to keep out of torpedo range on all of our ships here. Finish the damn cheerful off. She's at 2%, 1%. 
0.2%. All right, there she goes. Now we're focusing in on the heart. Let's have our armored cruiser focus on the CL. What's the speed? 17.7 versus R20. So we can even run down that enemy CL if we need to. Our CLs are perfect destroyer leaders and, and warships for dealing with enemy torpedo boats because they've got so many rapid firing guns on the broadside. Well, Army Vet, recent uh, recent events would certainly bear that out, huh? All right. I think the heart is doomed as well. We've done a good job of taking out enemy torpedo boats. That is not something I can... Oh, no! Ugh. I was not paying... Oh, no, not another torpedo. Damn it! Uh, two into the Victoria Louisa. Please don't sink. I was paying more attention to sinking that enemy torpedo boat. We did end up getting the Can Canterbury. But yeah, this, I mean, okay, so I'm playing at times five speed, so I guess that's my fault. On the flip side, game's kind of ridiculous with, uh, with when you've got multiple, nah, whatever, I was playing times three speed. That's my fault. All right, so Victoria Louise seems to be surviving. I don't think they were allied to Japan by 1890, but shortly thereafter, I, I don't remember what year the pact was signed. It's, it's close to around now. I want to say it was like 1898 or like 1902. Obviously, it was before 1905. All right, is that another enemy torpedo boat? Here's to be. The shock. Bury them under foreign shells. Flash fire. Did they survive that? I've never seen a warship survive a flash fire in this game. I mean, I get that a torpedo boat probably doesn't have a ton of ammunition to cook off, but that's, that's crazy. I think we got it with another torpedo. Boom. Oh, we're going to collide. We sank the shark. Nineteen oh two. Good to know. All right, so we sank another enemy torpedo boat. They've got the Python and the Desperate, both in action still. All right, so our armored cruiser still basically has no speed, and frankly, with their TB's sailing away from us. We have no real chance of catching them. Move up to times five. Must have got a lucky hit on that TB. A couple of lucky hits here on the Python. At that range, I would deem those hits as lucky. Lol. We're shooting torpedo boat guns at battleships. You're not going to penetrate that armor, probably. Certainly not beyond a kilometer. All right, so Python's got some fires going here. Carl sure is closing in. We'll have to be careful to avoid enemy torpedoes. Turn 
returning to fire for sure. Caught over. That's not gonna miss. Fuck. Oh shit, a 2000 hit torpedo? I wonder if the AI increased its damage model or its its research on its torpedoes to be to cause more damage. We've already sunk one enemy CL, so I think losing a CL for us would be fine. Carl sure is going to go down right there. Carl sure kind of had a, a, a good reputation in the fleet, too. She's chased down a couple of convoys and destroyed them in the past. She had a pretty good, uh, pretty good track record for us. That's a sad loss. But, oh, well. Honestly, it's not that big a deal. We've got more CLs in the pipe. The Invincible class? Huh. Maybe I'm confusing the Invincibles and the Swiftures. Anyway, I'm not going to end this battle before we sink these other enemy TVs. Do they have any ammo left on them? No. Both their torpedo boats are out of ammo. So have Adam new. Go get him. They've got no torpedoes left. Fear not. Feel free to use your own torpedoes, even. All right, so Desperate looks almost dead in the water. So she's going to take a fish here, which I imagine will sink her does and then we're going to go ahead and try and chase down the python they're just using their deck guns at this point yeah that's all they got all right python she's lost her control tower her, her conning tower already looks like there's some flooding in her rudders rudder area of the ship so I don't think even though they're theoretically faster than me although they're barely their torpedo boats are barely even faster 21.7 knots versus 21 they've got slow torpedo boats welcome to the chat macro by the way it's always nice to see a new face There were multiple. Was it, was there maybe an invincible class before the battle cruisers? I mean, there's like three hoods in the history of the Royal Navy. Actually, more than that. But during sort of the battleship era, there's like this weird barbette ship that's a pre pre dreadnought. That's kind of like a pre dreadnought, but predates the pre dreadnought. I think they had open top turrets. Then there was a hood, I want to say, in, like, the Royal Sovereign or one of the actual pre-Dreadnought classes. How would you know about exact circumstances about, like, ballast being blown? What do you mean, ballast? Oh, you mean, like, in terms of knowing that they're out of ammo? I wouldn't, but, you know, the game gives you that info, so... All right, so, and they're done. All right, I guess that'll end the battle here. So it should be a victory for us in the port defense. We did lose a, a light cruiser with an armored cruiser, moderately damaged, so the Victoria Louise, moderately damaged, the Carl Schroer sunk, 
That being said, the enemy lost all six torpedo boats and their CL, so seven to one ship sunk. The crew losses were pretty even, actually, 427 to 315. Our CLs are more heavily are manned than theirs, I guess. And victory points only narrowly favored us, but a victory is a victory. So another thousand victory points for us, although they had a fair amount themselves. And then we've got a stand-up fight here, boys. Five armored cruisers for the Royal Navy versus five armored cruisers for the Kaiser's Navy. The Hoche Sea Flotilla. Well, this could be an interesting one. The British ships in our past experience have a heavier main gun, but we have much better speed. I don't know if these are going to be the British armored cruisers that have torpedoes. If they are, that could change things. If they don't have torpedoes, then, uh, then maybe it doesn't change things. Our transport capacity is up to 93% from a low of 87 after those 22 merchants were lost a few months ago. So we we're building you know, our own version of the victory ships. Zero unrest, 105 naval prestige. 37 ships active, 18 building. Did a whole bunch complete? Negative 3 million balance. Oh, I think our torpedo boat's completed. Our new torpedo boats. Yeah, all these guys. That's nice. So we got like nine more torpedo boats in the fleet. Seven more months on the battleships. Five on the CLs. How's our cruise situation looking? Or manpower. How do I even see that? Where I'm trying to remember. Up here, cool pool. I really should just automatically replenish at the start of the next turn, depending on reserves. Because I know we've lost some crew on some of these ships, and I haven't done a good job of re-equipping them. Okay. Well, we've got a big battle coming here. We will fight it. Show the world screen, son. This is it. This is, this is the world screen. This is the very first iteration of the campaign. There have been a few patches, but um, they will have a world map eventually, I believe. With multiple countries like Spain and France and the U.S. and whatnot all playable. But at the moment, in the early access campaign version, it's just the North Sea and just Britain versus Germany. Britain has a total of 12 ports and we have six. Yeah, roughly. There's a couple of sea reason, regions, the North Sea, the Baltic. But with that being said, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this uh, episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game currently in early access being developed by Game Labs, um, a game where you build and uh, design warships and get to fight them in combat. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please leave your thoughts down below, and we'll pick this thing up next time in our next episode. Until then, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching. And I'm out.